Hello and thank you for watching. I'm Sergio with Mobility Scooters Direct. Today, doing a review video for the Pride Wrangler Scooter. The Wrangler Scooter is an off-road scooter with 14 and a half inch tires, which are pneumatic inflatable. It has full suspension, disc brakes, tow hooks, a captain seat, and much, much more. This powerful mobility scooter has a 24 volt brushless motor capable of reaching speeds of up to 11 and a half miles per hour. It uses a delta tiller, which means you can operate the scooter single-handedly using your right or left hand. It's a very convenient option found in many of the Pride Mobility scooters today. Let us review the dash options. As you can see, it's a fully digital dash. On the left, you have the battery meter, and on the right, you have the speed meter. You can press the turtle button, which is gonna decrease the speed, or the rabbit button to increase speed. There's also another rabbit button at the top right which activates the fast mode. This is going to make your scooter go much faster when it's not in fast mode. In the middle you have hazard lights. The hazard lights are very bright. They blink in the front and in the rear. The same lights when not being placed into hazard mode are used as turn signals. Turn signal sets on both sides, the left and the right side of the dashboard, makes it convenient to access either the left or right hand turn signals using your left or right hand. There are also two horn buttons on the left and right side. The light activation switch is at the top left. Hit that once and it's gonna turn on the headlights and the rear lights so that you can light up the road or pathway when working at the nighttime or traveling in the nighttime. Simply hit that button again to turn the lights off. What's nice about this scooter, and it's a very unique feature, it has several modes including odometer mode, trip mode, it even has temperature mode which is unique. And of course it shows you the time and the miles per hour on the display of the digital dash on the Wrangler. Overall it's a very easy to use dash. You can set the clock and change the time when it's daylight savings times or you're wanting to switch the time zone when you just got the uh, scooter out of the box sometimes you may need to adjust the time depending on your time zone i recommend using the uh, user manual read through it so that you can see how to set the time and adjust the time so on and so forth on the front left side of the handlebar is the tiller adjustment lever simply pull the lever and then you can either tilt the handlebar tiller assembly forward towards you or away from you to make more room if you need more space between the tiller and your knees. It's a very convenient option which gives the user plenty of comfort options. Another great feature about the Wrangler is the fact that it does have an emergency disc brake, a manual brake that's going to activate the disc brake. So if you're going really fast and you don't want to rely on the automatic brakes, let's say you want to stop a little bit faster than what the electromagnetic brakes can provide, you can use the manual hand brakes. On the back of the tiller assembly, you'll find that there is an XLR charging port for the battery charger. We do recommend charging it overnight when you first get the scooter. Underneath that is a little access tab which you can pull open and you'll find a few fuses, a five and a 10 amp fuse as well as a USB charging port so that you can charge your USB powered devices while on the go. You'll see there are some pretty uh, high visibility reflectors towards the bottom which will allow people to see you coming from the side. The keys, are pretty straightforward. You do get a spare key and the ignition set is to the right side of the tiller assembly. As we move on over to the seat, you'll notice that the seat has extra padding on the bottom and on the back of the seat, which really adds an extra layer of comfort for the user. The headrest is adjustable. There's a little clip, which if you push that in and then raise the seat headrest up or push it down, you can lock it into place, very similar to how an automobile seat works. Some other great features about the seat has to do with the armrests. The armrests are flip-up armrests. They're also height adjustable. Simply loosen the knob, raise the armrest, and then retighten it into the position that you want it in. The same thing applies for the width of the armrest. You can take out the securement pin, untighten the knob, and then slide the armrest out either to make a more wide seating position or a more narrow one depending on where you want those armrests. Very easy to use, very user friendly. 
There is an accessory port. It's a one inch universal accessory port receiver, which allows you to install a basket, oxygen tank holder, cane holder, quad holder, many different types of accessories that are compatible with the Wrangler and available for sale on our website. Another great thing about the Wrangler seat is that it actually has lumbar support. You can twist this knob and as you twist it, you'll notice that the lumbar support begins to firm up by pushing itself outwards or inwards. Again, the armrests are flip up armrests. You also have the option to rotate the seat and slide it forward and backwards. The depth adjustability forward and backward adjustability is it's got a pretty long range there. You can slide it forward quite a bit. You can also rotate the seat 360 degrees. It's important to note that the seat needs to be tilted upwards. You can't have it reclined all the way to spin it around 180 degrees because the arm, the, um, the seat will make contact with the tiller, uh, especially if the tiller is tilted back and the seat is slightly reclined. In order to spin it around 180 degrees, you wanna make sure that the tiller is all the way out and the seat is propped upwards in a straight position, not leaned back. But it will rotate 360 degrees. Another great feature about the Pride Wrangler seat. Something else that's great about the Wrangler is that it comes with a free basket. It's very easy to remove if you need to store the Wrangler in a vehicle. Simply push the tab and lift up. To install it again, you simply line up the two sliding rails with the hooks and just let it slide down into place until the tab clicks. On the front of the Wrangler, you're gonna notice that there are tow hooks and you'll also see the suspension and the disc brakes. You can tow items. I don't recommend towing extremely heavy items, but perhaps a tote or a wagon with some garden supplies will work. The tires are new, uh, tube pneumatic tires. You can inflate them. They are very, very rugged. They're capable of handling many, many terrains. They're 14 and a half inches. Another thing you'll notice in the rear of the scooter, there are two sensors. Those are actually backup sensors. If you get too close to something while reversing, the scooter will beep to let you know. We'll demonstrate that a little bit later. On the back of the scooter towards the bottom, you're going to notice two yellow indicators. The indicators are showing you that the levers for the freewheel mode are in the back of the scooter and in the upward position is the drive mode and in the downward position is neutral mode. What does that mean? Well, in neutral mode, you can push the scooter manually without using the motor. So if your batteries die, put those two levers in the downward position, and then you can push the scooter in freewheel mode without the batteries. The scooter will not operate in freewheel mode, so make sure that you push those two levers back up into the drive position before powering back on the unit. If you power up the unit in freewheel mode, it will not work. Be sure to refer to your user manual for more instructions on how to operate the scooter properly. If you'll notice in the battery casing, you'll see the access to the fuse trip switch. I'm going to show you how to access that, but we will need to remove the seat in order to access the batteries. To remove the seat, simply grab it from the base, put one hand on the base and one hand on the back and lift straight up. You don't need any tools, come straight off, just pick up, you might need a little bit of strength to lift it up, it is a bit heavy. Put it off to the side safely, and then you're going to have to locate the four screws that are used to secure the shroud for the battery assembly. There are four, two on the top and two on the base towards the floorboard. Simply use your hands to remove those. You don't need a tool or a screwdriver. They are finger tight. You don't need to over tighten them when taking or putting them back on. Once you have the four screws removed, you can carefully lift the box up. Make sure that you're not going to scratch the box with the seat post as it makes its way through that circular hole that it's sticking up through. Once you have the cover off, just put it to the side and then you'll see that the batteries are exposed and the circuit breaker switch is also exposed. There are two batteries 
They are 75 amp hour, 12 volt batteries. They are sealed lead acid chemistry batteries. Installing them is pretty simple. You will want to refer to our unboxing and setup video for instructions on how to do so, but it's pretty straightforward. Just like any other battery setup, you have a positive and a negative. To connect the battery, there is a screw and nut. The battery terminals simply connect to the respective positive and negative uh, terminal connections. And the fuse trip, when you first buy the scooter, is going to be turned off. It's going to be tripped, so you will need to activate the trip so that the power reaches the controller. Otherwise, you will not get power from the batteries to the motor and the scooter will not operate. So when you first get it, make sure that you trip that fuse switch so that it's in the upward position and you'll be good to go. We're going to give you a demonstration of how that fuse trip works. If you do trip the fuse for whatever reason, let's say you go over a big bump and the scooter stops working, the tab will be exposed right under the E9 sign. Simply push that tab back up and you'll be good to go again. The scooter should have power once again. You may need to restart the unit if you do have a fuse trip. It's pretty standard. Don't be alarmed. So if you hit the fuse trip and you notice it doesn't have power, just recycle power. The batteries you'll see have harnesses on them that are used to secure the batteries down tight so you don't have any vibrating going on when you're riding the scooter off-road. There are several anchor points for the straps. There's no right way or wrong way to secure the straps. Just make sure that they're firm and that the batteries aren't shaking around when you have them secured with the straps. The seat post does have the option to raise up and down. You will need to remove the batteries and disconnect that nut and bolt. You can then raise the seat post up a little bit and then secure it in a different height position depending on where you want the height to be. You'll notice in the back you can see the rear suspension. The the housing for the batteries in itself are going to be covering the rear suspension, but you could see it from the rear there on the back of the scooter. When you're ready to put the battery cover back on, simply make sure that the wire harnesses for the positive and negative connections are not sticking up too much to obstruct the cover from being placed back on. When you're putting the cover back on, just be careful so that the seat post doesn't scratch the shroud. You're going to want to put the top lip underneath the shroud from the rear first and then press down so that the bottom part of the shroud cover can lay flat against the platform where your feet go. You may have to just push down a little bit to get the screw holes to align, grab the four screws that we used earlier, and screw them back on. We'll go ahead and fast forward this part so you don't have to wait. Once all four screws are secured, you can then go ahead and grab the seat and begin to remount the seat. There is a male connector. Simply get that male connector to fall right into the female connector part of the seat post. And as long as the, the seat is straight and not being placed in at an angle, it should slide right in. To check that it's secure, go ahead and use the rotation knob to see that it clicks into place when you rotate it. As mentioned earlier, the seat can rotate 360 degrees, but you will need to make sure that the seat is not reclined and that the tiller is extended forward as much as possible. And then as you can see, the seat will rotate 360 degrees, which is a very convenient option should you want to look behind you without turning the scooter around. You can also enter and exit the scooter easily by rotating the seat so that the seat is facing either the left or right side of the scooter. When storing the unit, you can fold the seat down all the way, and we've actually been able to store this scooter inside the back of a van and SUV, uh, with a ramp, of course. But you, as you can see, if you lower the tiller and take the seat off and then take the basket off, it'll fit in the back of most uh, crossovers, SUVs, or vans. Definitely will fit in the back of a pickup truck. Believe it or not, it's not that heavy compared to some of these other heavy-duty recreational scooters. The total weight of the product without the batteries is going to be about 
270 pounds. With the batteries, you're looking at about 370 pounds. Uh, again, for most heavy-duty scooters, it's not that heavy, but definitely it is a heavy-duty machine, therefore it is going to be heavy. Now I'm going to take the scooter out for a ride, and I'm going to take you with me in an FPV-style format. I'm going to be operating the scooter with one hand, so forgive me if the ride is a little bit bumpy. I am using one hand to hold the camera and using one hand to operate the scooter single-handedly. Electromagnetic brakes kick in as soon as you let go of the throttle, so you don't need to brake. As soon as you let go, the scooter will stop. Again, you can use the handbrake to slow down, to stop it even faster. Uh, the turtle button and the rabbit button are going to increase the speed. As you can see here, I'm increasing the speed, but I'm not in fast mode yet, where I can push the rabbit button at the top right with the little dashes behind the rabbit. That's going to kick it up into overgear. So top speed's about six miles per hour with the speed indicator all the way up. But if you hit the rabbit button at the top right of the dash, the little rabbit indicator with the three lines behind it right there, it will take you to the top speed, which is at about 11.4 miles per hour. That's the top speed. Uh, it will reach that speed, but you have to keep in mind several things can affect the total top speed rather. Uh, the weight of the user or the terrain that you're on, if you're on a hill or an incline, it's obviously not going to be able to reach that 11 mile per hour, 11.4 mile per hour top speed. But I hit the um, rabbit button, and as you can see, it's climbing up in speed. It made it to 10, no problem. And depending on the state of the battery and how heavy the user is, you can see it may not reach 11.4. I was able to reach about 10.5. But we are on a pretty bumpy road with some ups and downs. I'm taking it off-road here, and it's handling it like a beast. The suspension and the big tires make it extremely easy to operate off-road, even with one hand, which is pretty impressive. I have to say that this scooter provides one of the most smoothest rides I've ever had the pleasure to take uh, out on this path here, which we use quite often for several ride-along demonstrations. It's a big open field. I take scooters off-road, there's sand, there's grassy patches with ditches in them. So if you really want to test a scooter out, I mean, this is a great place to do it. And as you can see, we're going through soft sand here. There's a lot of bumps in the road, lots of uh, sand piles that I'm approaching here. And the scooter handled it just fine. I didn't run into any sticky situations where I thought I was going to get stuck in sand or not be able to pull myself out of the off-road terrain that I rode through. I think overall the scooter is definitely one of my favorite off-road slash recreational scooters that we carry uh, compared to some of the other ones that we have rode. It is a little bit on the slower end. I will say for a rec scooter, most of the scooters go around 14 miles per hour like the Raptor by Pride Mobility. But if you're not really worried about top speeds and you want something that's more capable of handling various types of terrains, off-road paths, this is definitely going to be the winner. I let go of the electromagnetic brakes, and as you can see, it stopped right away. And I just wanted to give you a little down-low shot, a little action of the tire spinning here so you can see the suspension and how it plays a role. I'm really not feeling many of the bumps here, even though I'm operating the scooter with one hand. It's pretty stable. You can see the camera's not really shaking around a lot. I'm not using a gimbal stabilizer. I'm simply holding the camera with my hand. So the fact that it's able to give me such a smooth ride to the point where I'm not shaking the camera around a lot says a lot about the suspension and the overall smoothness factor of the ride that you get with the Wrangler Mobility Scooter. Again, it can reach up to 11.4 miles per hour. Uh, it does have the ability to travel up to 24 miles on a full charge, considering several factors, of course, the incline, the weight of the user, so on and so forth, the battery charge. But if you have a full charge, it's technically supposed to be able to reach up to 24 miles. And again, that's going to be with the 12 volt, 75 amp hour batteries. It comes with an off-board 8 amp charger, the XLR charger. And all in all, I think it's a really impressive scooter, especially the, the fact that it can hold up to 350 pounds. And it has all of these features to give you such a smooth ride on off-road terrains. It's a great option to consider. We're going to demonstrate one more thing here. I want to show you the backup sensor. We're going to turn the volume up. 
and as you can hear, the closer we get to the vehicle, you can actually hear that beeping speed up and get louder. All in all, we think the Wrangler is a top choice for anyone looking for an off-road recreational scooter. It comes with a one-year in-home service contract and an excellent manufacturer's warranty. Pride Mobility manufactures and creates really reliable products that are built to last a long time. We highly recommend it. You can get this scooter tax-free and with free shipping at mobilityscootersdirect.com. I'm Sergio. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.